Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. Now we are going to take a look on lecture 1, Introduction to Database and Database Environment, part 2. This is the objective of this lesson. We will take a look on the database environment, history of DBMS and the advantages and disadvantages of DBMS. Database environment consists of five different components. The first one is hardware. Hardware can range from a PC to a network computer. The second one is software. The software that will be used is DBMS, operating system, network software and also the application programs. The third one is data. It is used by the organization and a description of this data is called the schema. Number four is about procedures. Procedures are instruction and set of rules that should be applied to the design and use of the database and DBMS. The last one is people. People is the user of the database system. Now let's take a look on the rules in the database environment. The first one that we have is Data Administrator. Data Administrator is responsible for the management of the data resource. The second one that we have is Database Administrator, DBA. Database Administrator is responsible for the physical realization of the database, including physical database design and implementation, security and integrity control, maintenance of the operational system. Next one, we have the Database Designers. We have two types of Database Designer. The first one is Logical Database Designer. Logical Database Designer is concerned with identifying the data, the entities, the attributes, the relationships between the data and the constraints on the data. And the second one, we have the Physical Database Designer. This Physical Database Designer will decide how the Logical Database Design is to be physically realized in our database system. The fourth user in our database environment is application programmers. Application programmers will develop the application program that provide the required functionality to the end user. All the requirements must be implemented in the system. And the last one, we have the end users. End users are the clients for the database system. Now, let's move on to history of database system. The first generation is about hierarchical and network. This type of DBMS was based on binary trees, where they shaped like a tree and relations were only limited between parent and child. For network, each record can have multiple parents in comparison with one in the hierarchical DBMS. The second generation is about relational database, where data is stored in terms of table format. All tables will be linked by either one-to-one, one-to-many, or many-to-many -many relationship. The third one is about object relational database. It is said to provide middle ground between relational databases and object-oriented databases where data is stored in terms of object. The fourth one is NoSQL databases. It came as a response to the internet and need for faster speed and processing of unstructured data. Advantages of DBMS The first one is to control of data redundancy. Database approach attempts to control the redundancy by integrating the files so the multiple copies of the same data are not stored. The second one, by controlling the redundancy, we reduce the risk of inconsistencies occurring. What does mean by data consistency? Means data is accurate. The third one is more information from the same amount of data. With the integration of operational data, it may be possible for the organization to derive additional information from the same data. Database integrity refers to the validity and consistency of stored data. Integrity is usually expressed in terms of constraints or business rules. Then to improve security, database security is the protection of the database from unauthorized user. 
enforcement of standard means integration allows the DBA to define and enforce the necessary standards to the DBMS or database. Combining all the organization's operational data into one database and creating a set of applications that work on this one source of data is what we call as economy of scale. Thus, balance of conflicting requirement means since the database is under the control of the DBA, the DBA can make decision about design and operational use of database that provide the best use of resources for organization as a whole. Improve data accessibility and responsiveness. Again, as a result of integration, data that crosses departmental boundaries is directly accessible to the end user. Then improve productivity. As mentioned previously, the DBMSS provides many of standards function that a programmer would normally have to write in a file-based application. Improve maintenance to data independence means if the data change, the system does not necessarily to be changed. Increase concurrency. We want multiple users to use the same system at the same time. And the last one, Improve backup and recovery services means to provide measures to protect the data from failures to the computer system or application programs. Let's take a look on these advantages of DBMS. The first one is complexity. All roles in database system must understand this functionality to take full advantage of it. Failure to understand the system can lead to bad design decisions which can have serious consequences for an organization. The second one is for cost. The cost of DBMSs vary significantly, depending on the environment and functionality provided. The third one is additional hardware. These storage requirements for the DBMS and the database may necessitate the purchase of additional storage space. Next one is cost of conversion. In some situations, the cost of the DBMS and extra hardware may be insignificant compared with the cost of converting existing application to run on the new DBMS and hardware. Next one is performance. Typically, a file-based system is written for a specific application. However, the DBMS is written to be more general to cater for many applications rather than just one. So the effect is that some applications may not run as fast as they do. The last one is high impact of failure. The centralization of resources increases the vulnerability of the system. Since all users and applications rely on the availability of the DBMS, the failure of certain components can bring operation to a halt. That's all for now. See you again in the next part. Thank you.